everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to go over some fever nursing diagnosis. So fever is also known as pyrexia, hyperthermia, and it's a temporary increase in body temperature and it's often due to an infection or illness. Um, it's the body's natural defense mechanism to fight off pathogens like bacteria and viruses. A fever is generally considered present in the body when the temperature rises above 98.6, which is about 37 Celsius, um, and reaches 100.4 Fahrenheit and 38 degrees or higher Celsius. It is a common symptom of many medical conditions and is a sign that the immune system is actively responding to an invader. So first, let's start off with the nursing assessment. And what we're going to start off with is the subjective. Now, this is what the patient's reporting. Um, you don't necessarily see it. So the subjective data is patient reports feeling hot, chilled, or alternating between both. Uh, they complain of a headache, muscle aches, or general malaise. Now, the objective data, the data that you can see and observe. So remember, objective starts with an O, observe starts with an O. So objective observe. This is what the nurse can observe. Okay, and they can observe, the nurse, uh, elevated body temperature, um, 38 uh, Celsius or 104 Celsius or above, 100.4, sorry. Uh, flush skin and pallor. Now, what's interesting is pallor um, is pale skin. And basically what's going on is during a fever, um, the body redirects blood flow away from the skin towards vital organs like the heart, brain, and lungs. And this is just the body's natural response to conserve um, energy and temperature during a fever. When a fever is present, blood vessels and skin constrict, so they get smaller, to minimize heat loss. As a result, less blood reaches the surfaces of the skin, um, leading to a paler appearance. So pallor is usually means paler. Um, and this is why someone with a fever may look pale, especially in the face and extremities. So now we're going to move on to uh, nursing diagnosis. So we're going to look at um, several, but we'll do one main one right now. Uh, hyperthermia related to infectious process, inflammatory response, or altered thermal regulation, as evidenced by elevated body temperature, tachycardia, warm flush skin, diaphoresis, that's when the, the skin feels like moist or wet to touch, and subjective reports of feeling hot. Again, you may be able to feel that, so that could be objective, but the patient will also say they just feel hot and yucky. Um, our goal and expected outcome would be our short term. So we have nursing, um, you have nursing instructors that will want the as evidenced by, they may not, they may want a short term and a long term goal, they may not. It's just please go by whatever your um, instructors want you to do. I'm just offering um, this so that this can help you uh, with your studies. So we'll start with a short-term goal. A patient will demonstrate reduction in body temperature toward a normal range, 36.5 to 37.5 Celsius, within 24 hours of implementation. Long-term goal, patient will maintain normal body temperature and demonstrate understanding of fever management strategies and when to seek medical attention by discharge. And that's important because if they're having fevers and they're not able to maintain it at home after discharge, they need to come back in. They may need a whole new set of blood draws and blood cultures. You just don't know. So make sure they understand that if they cannot regulate their temperature at home with some of the interventions we're going to go over, um, then they do need to come back or contact their physician or care specialist. So we're going to do nursing interventions and rationale. So we're going to monitor vital signs, especially the temperature, every two to four hours or as indicated by the patient condition. This will also be indicated by whatever floor you're, you're working on, but sometimes you will need to do um, a lot of temperatures throughout your shift. And the rationale for that is regular mind allows for assessment of fever pattern, effectiveness of interventions, and early identifications of complication temperature trends provide more valuable information than isolated readings. 
So you do a temperature here, and then six hours later you do a temperature here. Well, they have a fever. We don't really know when it spikes. So it's good to watch that. And, and especially if they have Q4 hour vital signs on your floor, um, and you just gave them something for a fever or hyperthermia, you do want to watch um, and do another um, temperature sooner than later. So whatever your facility says, you know, sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's an hour. So an administer antipyretic uh, medications as prescribed. So that's acetaminophen or Tylenol and NSAIDs as prescribed by the healthcare provider. Um, antipyretics inhibit prostaglandin synthesis of the hypothalamus, reducing the thermal regulatory set point and promoting heat loss through vasodilation and sweating. Uh, maintain adequate hydration through oral and IV fluids as indicated and ordered. So rationale is fever increases metabolic rate and then what happens is you lose uh, fluid through diaphoresis, tachypnea, tachypnea, <laughs> fast breathing, um, requiring increased fluid intake to prevent dehydration and support their thermal regulation. And number four, Implement infection control measures and investigate the underlying cause. So why are they having a fever? Let's remember, fever is a symptom. So why are they having it? And so it's really good to find out what's causing the fever and then treat that. Um, so what we put down here is rationale. Identifying and treating the underlying cause of fever is essential for resolution. Appropriate isolation precautions prevent transmission of potential infectious agents. So exactly. So if they have a fever due to an infectious disease, you know, you're going to have to, you might have to put them in isolation. Um, again, you're going to go by your facility's guidelines and what your nursing instructor says. For the evaluation, um, we're going to say the patient's temperature is retained, we're hoping the patient's temperature has returned to a normal range and remains stable without antipyretics. So once you've been able to control their fever with Tylenol or uh, some other NSAID, you want to make sure that, the, that they can maintain their own temperature um, within a satisfactory range without having to use these antipyretics. Uh, vital signs are within normal parameters. Patient no longer exhi exhibits tachycardia or tachypnea associated with a febrile state. Patient demonstrate Adequate hydration is evidenced by moist mu mucous membranes and good skin turgor. Um, and they also have an appropriate urine output. The patient or caregiver verbalizes understanding of fever management techniques and signs and symptoms requiring medical attention. Again, we were talking about if they can't bring that fever down with like normal Tylenol or an NSAID, um, they need to go right back and see their healthcare provider or to the ER. So now we're going to go to some critical points in nursing tips that you may see on the NCLEX exam or on a, in the case study. So we're going to look for temperature pattern significance. So there's different fever patterns. There's continuous where you just, you know, they may have um, a probe on their Foley or you're just taking it um, and it's just not, it's not going away. Or remittent or intermittent coming and going, relapsing. You get it to go away and then suddenly after a few hours it just decides to come back. So this may indicate a specific disease process. Document the patterns carefully, including temperature spikes in relation to medication administration. Shivering. So shivering is, you know, the uncontrollable shaking of the body, um, in case you don't know. So if a patient begins shivering during cooling measures, stop immediately and reassess. Shivering generates heat and can counterproductively raise the core temperature. So, you know, that's really important to remember, and you may actually see that on a case study. Neurological considerations. So fever above 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, so 104.0 degrees Fahrenheit, requires aggressive management due to increased risk of delirium, seizures, and neurological damage, especially in the pediatric and elderly populations. Diagnostic value. Never treat a fever without treating a cause. Fever is a symptom. Again, please remember that fever is a symptom, not a disease, and masking it without addressing the underlying condition may delay proper diagnosis and treatment. So here are some 
I think four additional NANDA diagnostic statements for fever. Um, risk for fluid volume de deficit or deficient fluid volume related to increased metabolic rate, diaphoresis, and decreased oral intake as evidenced by dry mucous membranes, degreased skin turgor, and concentrated urine with tachycardia. Tachycardia is um, a fast heart rate. Acute pain related to inflammatory processes, increased metabolic demand um, as evidenced by verbal reports of headache, myalgia, that's muscle aches, arthalgia, and nonverbal pain behavior such as grimacing or guarding. Impaired comfort related to illness-induced psychological, sorry, physiological response as evidenced by restlessness, irritability, reported feeling hot, cold, chills, and inability to sleep or relax. Just can't get comfortable. Activity intolerance related to an imbalance between oxygen supply and demand increased metabolic rate and generalized weakness as evidenced by fatigue, exertional dyspnea, and inability to complete normal daily activities. So this is our basic nursing care plan for fever, hyperthermia, um, pyrexia. Um, if you go to nursestudy.net, um, you can just type in over here in the search box, hyperthermia or fever, and we'll give you even more nursing care plans, common causes, clinical manifestation, the assessment, um, and then there's uh, five more nursing care plans in there. I don't think I repeated any of them, but I'm not sure. So I really hope that you liked and enjoyed this small lecture on uh, fever care plans and nursing diagnosis. Um, please leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you want to see any other care plans um, for any other uh, pathology that you may be studying, um, but we will be doing more of these um, in the future. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend.